Alright everyone, and we're back for day 7 of the Invent of Code in Erlang uh, through some ad hoc unedited videos. And if you've seen the previous ones, uh, you're now pretty accustomed to what kind of format this is. So this is day 7, and I haven't yet uh, read what day 7 is about, but I've heard things. Um, Mostly, I've heard that it was uh, considered to be kind of painful, kind of crappy and annoying to do, and apparently that in part two, um, Erlang should be a good fit. So I assume that it's going to be uh, related to the um, code execution with some parallelism, which is something I've seen in 2017 on step, I think, 18. Um, so let's see what this problem is about. Five amplifiers connected in a series. Each one receives an input signal and produces uh, an output signal. They are connected such that the first amplifier's output leads to the second amplifier's input, second output leads to the third amplifier, and so on. Okay, so this is kind of a fold of multiple function with each amplifier being a function. The first amplifier's value, input value is zero and the last output amplifier leads to your ship thrusters. The L's I've sent you some amplifier controller software. Your puzzle input, a program that should use it run on your existing encode computer, which we have started cleaning up a bit. Uh, that was the longest video so far, and hopefully that will pay off today. When a copy of the program starts running on an amplifier, it will first use an input instruction to ask uh, for its current phase setting integer from zero to four. Each phase setting is used exactly once, but the elves can't remember which amplifier uh, which needs phase setting. Okay, so 0 to 4 times 5 amplifier, that's a lot of possible values. The program will then call another input instruction to get amplifier's input signal. Compute the correct input signal. Uh, wait, wait, wait. On an amplifier, the first input is each amplifier. Okay, so each amplifier is going to ask for input. So we won't be able to reuse the input as we have right now. It just asks for direct output input from people. Uh, only because we would need to probably do all the uh, phases by hand, and that's going to start being painful. The program will then call another input instruction. Okay. Compute grey output signal supply back, and so on. The job is to find the largest output signal that can be sent to the thrusters by trying every possible combination of phase settings on the amplifiers. Make sure the memory is not shared or reused, so that's fine because we're doing functional stuff. Suppose you want to try to say setting to 31240, which would mean setting amplifier A to setting 31240. Then you could determine the opposite. Start the copy of the amplifier A. Its first input instruction provided by setting 3. Okay. Start the software amplifier B, provide it the phase setting 1, and then whatever output signal was produced, amplifier A will then produce the amplifier C. Okay. Final output sequence thrusters. However, this phase setting sequence may not have been the best one. Okay. So this is essentially just going to be running the program a bunch of times and finding the highest result possible. Okay, max thruster signal. So what is the highest signal that can be sent to the thrusters? They don't actually care to know uh, the phase setting for it. They only want the max signal, which is, oh, that's the output from yesterday or day six. So uh, they, let's go read the day 05. And I'm going to start by string to source, copy pasting the entire computer because I don't want to break the other versions. I'm just going to uh, carry it around. Um, around to program. That was fine. How was this being used? String to source. From program source to map. Okay. So I'm going to go save my input. I'm going to save to private directory day 07. Um, and so this should be advent input. Day 
Okay, it was seven, and that was just string. Because this is an evaluated program, not a compiled program, and then it's just going to be run the program from the source to map. But this one is not exactly going to be the same because I need five components of them. So how is the phase? How do I put the input of one to the other? That's going to be an interesting one. Um, its first input instruction provided the phase setting three, as its second input instruction provided with the input signal zero. Okay. It will use an output instruction to indicate the amplifier's output signal. So, interesting. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, instead of outputting directly, here we had all the uh, upcodes that we had, the extraction for the various parameters. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is possibly some cleanup, but I'm doing to do it a bit later. The first thing I want to do for that one is change how I do my outputs and whatnot. And uh, to do that, I'm going to create some um, specific ways to do it. So to get an input, the thing I'm thinking about doing is just getting input n, and this is it. Right, and and this is going to be the input we have, and so I can create a kind of a buffer for the input, so that my first program's input could just be if I'm running it on my self program, I could just say first input is zero, and then I have a sequence, and I just send the sequences like that. Now to handle the output, I'm going to do the same thing, uh, but flipping it around, so. Here it's going to be self output and read argument of R and a map. And this alone should be enough to let me thread everything through the caller process in a kind of a fun way. So this is going to be my first program input. And this is going to be fine. This is the first input of all of them. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Now I want to, um, you know, put them all in a chain. I need five of them is what they've been asking for. So I'm going to run the program five times. And, uh, the first thing I need to do for that, well, let's move that to the example section because I'm going to play with the little samples that they gave me. Uh, that one, okay. That's what's going to be the source here. I'm going to use one of the source they provided here. And I'm going to check the result first before starting to do a search in them. So this was their sample program. And uh, the way I would interleave them is that usually I would send the first input is, you know, four, three, two, one, zero. All right. The face setting is first. Four, three, two, one, and then zero. And its second input is um, 
Oh, then it's a signal zero for the first one because that's the one I sent. So I'm going to also send input zero for that one. And what I'm going to do uh, is because that out, this is like the signal, this is the result, and I'm weaving them in and out. So here, what I'm going to do is receive Uh, first step. Oops. Input. And that should be N1. And that's the intermediary step. Right? And so I can repeat that for each of the steps that I have here and see the result I have. And I'm going to do it explicitly in a terrible way, just like that. Uh, to make sure that at least that logic works before I start optimizing it and making it fancier because that's what I've been doing the other days. Uh, no, those are actually outputs that I'm turning into an output. the last program and my result should be C and 5 and I just return and 5 and that should be the end of my program will typo here what's the program whoop all right let's export the example seven example and if that's working the first time around this will be a great day oh four three two one zero wait four three two one zero from this yes so this one seems to work i'm going to um remove the line break i put in there because it's no longer required um i'm going also to try the next one and this one should be Zero, one, two, three, four, giving five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, this one here. Here we go. And they wanted me to do the, oops. What was it again? Very short memory. One zero one two three four. So zero one two three and four. All right, let's try it again. Five four three two one. That was very easy at this point. So to do it for the big final one, I'm going to abstract this away. So it's going to be run programs and the output, for example, that I wanted was, uh, I'm going to do it in the example still, because it's going to be simpler. Um, I'm going to give them five, four, three, two, one. Uh, was that, no, that's the output. I wanted to have zero, one, two, three, four. Um, all right, and that should give me the same results. So, 
source. Um, I will need to have the first iteration be different and that's fine. Because the thing I'm going to do is, you know, do that little cheating here of priming the first result that I have with the output. So I know that the first output I want is going to be the value zero. That's the first one I prime. And then um, I can, in a loop, for all of, oh, my, those aren't going to be, for all the inputs I have, or they call the inputs in there, it's the phase. And this is the first output that I'm wiring in to this one. Um, I'm just going to put a little underscore there to make it be known that it is a different one. Here I'm going to receive output n and return that. And this is going to be my little shim. Source code, phase settings when we're done. And we return OK. Execution is successful. Actually, I'm going to put this here. Oops. Like this, and you know what? Just this. Programs, source, uh, like this. And so the thing I'm going to do is in what order was I doing that? I first receive the output before passing it in. And then I input the phase. And then I sell I input the previous output. And, and then I then run the program from step zero. And it programs again from the source T. All right. Just putting a little separator in here. Of course, it is not used on the last sequence. Okay. That still works. So, part one is going to be essentially that program, but I need to have the search taking place and do a bunch of runs. And the thing they want me to do is I'm going to have to generate all the freaking lists for this and return the max value. So the value is from zero to four, I think. Where is it described? Uh, integer from zero to four. Okay. So if you recall the little enumeration function we did in the past, that's going to be search max um, and I'm going to start at you know, I have five inputs for them and I start with the source code Okay, uh, I'm going to start with value undefined. This is going to be my max value so far. Because all the values could be extremely negative, so I don't know what it is. But the thing is that undefined is always greater than these values. Damn it. Um, 
Is there a data type that I can use? That's kind of cheating. I think the integers are always smaller than other data types, so I'm going to just have to work with it. Uh, okay. So I know I'm going to be on the last phase of my program, whenever the phases are in a val. Uh, that's my iteration. So here, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start with zero. I'm going to assume because it just makes it a bit nicer to assume that the programs are going to be positive at some point. If I get to zero as a result, I will fix it differently. So this is the new result. Um, and then it's going to be the max between new and max. And that's a function. And the next function, this is the fun, annoying one, um, where, you know, if I have five digits, they're all to four because the output was zero to four, I'm done. So the other one is This is essentially just, you know, building counters with all the values and I'm just rolling them as I go. And so I will know that this is the n, n plus one. Oh, this is extremely elegant code. And the order of pattern matching just tells me that I will always be cycling with each of them that way. And that should count through all my values automatically. Um, of course, it is no longer required. All right. This is day seven, I believe. Ooh. Run programs does not work here. Uh, okay. Ooh, this function does not belong here. It belongs a bit lower here. And why is it failing for that one? The number zero is the last argument. Oh. What? Oh, yeah, of course. No. It's run programs on line 39. Line 39 is here. Line 32. Okay, yeah, I moved things around. And the phase is just T. Why is it complaining? How am I passing zero to that one? How am I calling run programs that way here? Phase settings are all there. Okay, same thing as usual. Uh, seven. Oops, that's an option. God damn it. Day 
seven. <laughs> Boom! Broke the limit. Okay, I'm going to be more specific on the function I'm running. This is run programs with an underscore. It's failing on the first one. Huh. Oh no. This is correct. Always catching. So I first call run programs with this entire array, and then why am I getting the value zero here? And that's the first call. I messed something up in my call sequence. Okay, let's get back to search max. Search max starts with the max value. Oh, yeah. There we go. That was obvious in retrospect. very long four two one zero and let's see if that works because I tried it on the real input on that one I think already 12 nope it's too low okay uh, what was I running that one on that one search max okay so I'm going to reuse the, oh wait, input zero here. That was probably faking my result and playing with them. That's longer than I wanted, but it's good anyway. Okay. So I'm going to try it again with the uh, example code I have here. And the thing I would have expected from the day 07 example before I recompile it is that's not the right result what did I break okay so I'm going to do first known max was this one I'm going to get the result that I'm searching for on the example. Table seven. Yeah, okay, I messed up some of my wiring in my automation. But this one, visibly. Is this that one? The previous should go. Yeah, the input comes before. I might have swapped these. No, that's even worse. Okay, let's reread this body here. First input instruction provided the implier's phase setting. Second input provided the input signal. So the phase comes before. To indicate the amplifier's output figure. Amplifier be provided with a phase setting one. So I give it that. I give it first the Ford. Oh. Wait, oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. that makes a lot of sense. I'm just corrupting the thing every time. Oh. Oh, 
Nope, that. <laughs> First one I was running. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, I had a lot of garbage accumulated in that one. Yeah, I was just uh, killing my things. So every time I search Max, That's dirtying the states. So search max, the thing I'm going to do is um, each run of the programs. I'm going to maintain the state clean to make things a bit simpler here. Um, and uh, here I'm going to and we're just going to tag it to make sure we do get an ambiguous results. Here, when we receive uh, the result, we just return that. And now we will try to maintain clear state. Okay, so I'm getting a higher value here now than what is supposed to happen. Let's run the next. As soon as I get four, 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 that's done. That's fine. At least the first execution is working fine. That's my result. And that's what I get for the phase settings on each one of them. That's fine. I guess the question is, um, so what I'm going to check is if there's any garbage left around in there, if there's more than one piece of input. No, always one. That's good. Okay. So again, we're reading again. First input instruction, amplifier, amplifier phase setting. Second input provided with the input signal zero. Face previous. Previous is zero as set from this line here. And I run the programs, but the result is my highest output. Wait, when I run the program, I get the phase, I get T, I plug that one until the last one, then the final output is sent. That should, should be fine. So here's what I'm going to do. If it's a new value, show me the phases that were used to make it there, and I want them to be just digits. Otherwise, 
do nothing. And then give me Now that's pretty bad. Um, let's see all of the phases that we run through because there might be something way worse in my program than I thought. Okay. And I do get all the iterations here. Huh. Okay. But it's supposed to be an integer. Are they supposed to all be unique? Because that will be far fewer possibilities. Like it's possible that it should just Let's see example. Yeah, they're all unique values. Okay, that's much simpler. So I only have to check a few orderings of the five possible ones in the search. So, um, where's my next function? The next function here is not actually working like this. It should instead be, um, you know, all the possible values that I have are going to be uh, shufflings of one, two, three, four, I believe. I'm just going to reread to make sure. Uh, I'm going to pause while I reread to save a bit of time. Yeah, here it is. Each face setting is used exactly once. Okay, that's going to be much simpler because now I can generate just. Um, all orderings of that one from one, two, three, four, five in any order whatsoever. Um, th there is um, one simple way of generating all the, uh, you know, variations of a given list that if I recall works with lists comprehension. So let's me see. Um, I think it's a nested list comprehension, so that should be something I is equal to. Um, I start with the digits of a list, so those are all the possible values I have. So that gives me just that list directly. But the thing that I can do is um, wait a second. It required some form of recursion to do. There's a quick, simple way to do it. Uh, those, actually, no, we'll see what we're doing. This is called a uh, permutation of a string. So W3M, we're just going to go on. Google directly and we'll see what can we do from a common line from that. So permutations of a list. Google search. Now, you know what? There's probably one in Erlang already. Those comprehensions. It's possible it's already in the documentation we have somewhere. Permutations. Look at that. The following is all permutations of all the elements in the list. Here we go. That is a bit simpler to do. Uh, that's the trick with them. So it's recursive function and list comprehension. I'm going to um, go at it and explain all the bits about it. So above the line, 
all my permutations. Actually, this one here is found in running a program. That's good. Okay. So the thing that it uh, that it does is that when I call it here with zero one two, uh, it's going to take the first list, grab for each of these lists, generate the same one with the same list minus the first elements with all the permutations, and so it's going to generate me something like uh, zero plus, and then we're going to have the permutations of one and two. And then it's going to take this one and generate me um, one version that has one and two, one version that has two and one. And then it's going to do the same with the next list. And then it's going to be one with zero and two and do the same kind of permutations for the entire thing. So that's the little function we're going to use. No, not feeling bad about this at all. Uh, more phases here we're only going to run on the next phases for the maxes and here instead of being done it's when we're all out of them and here is going to be the permutations of one two oops, three and four and that should be a bit nicer there we go all right so that was the problem misunderstanding of the spec once again running more programs that we needed to do uh, i'm going to leave this one here and here it's just going to be again the perms of three and four and now uh, we run that thing for part one uh, run 45 30 now that we have cleaned up everything, I just was scared a bit there. I was wondering if I was actually recording this entire thing or just talking to myself for 40 minutes now. And it worked. Good. What do we have now for part two? Amplifiers can't generate a large enough output signal to produce the thrust you'll need. The elves quickly walk you through rewiring into a feedback loop. Oh no. What does that mean? As there were before, A output can want to B and so on. However, the output from amplifier E is now connected into amplifier A's output. Input. This creates a feedback loop. The signal will be sent through the amplifiers many times. In feedback loop mode, the amplifiers need totally different phase settings. Integers from 5 to 9 Again, exact, uh, used exactly once. Okay. And to repeatedly take the input and produce the output many times before halting. Okay, so, oh, so they made the program good enough to just loop forever. Okay. Provide each amplifier its phase setting and its first input instruction. All further input output instructions are for signal. Don't restart on any amplifier. Each one should continue receiving sending signals until it halts. Okay. We'll be, with, we'll be between pairs of amplifiers except the very first signal and the very last signal. To start the process, the zero signal is sent exactly once. Eventually, the software on the amplifiers will halt after they have processed the final loop. When this happens, the last output signal from amplifier E is sent to the thrusters. Okay. This is going to be a freaky one. I, I understand now why people were saying that this one was uh, a big one. Okay, so let's see what we can do. We're going to destroy our example again. So here we go. Uh, I'm not going to use the same wrong programs there. It's going to be Nine, 
Do I still get the same input with that one? God, they made the same input to both programs at one. That 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 is crazy cool. Um, search max here might not need to change, but I'm going to. Yeah, it doesn't need to change. I'm going to make it. So that's the thing I'm going to change. Because my understanding is that this part of run programs is not going to, the max search is not going to change, only the rest is going to do. So, so that one I'm going to call uh, loop programs instead of that. Uh, this was taking a function. Okay, so my search function is the same. Now I just need to do a new program run. And that one seems to be a bit tricky. All right, let's see how they do it. So they still set the phases to all of them. And the thing I'm not catching entirely is, um, do I need to each use exactly once. So do I need to send the phase setting at each run that restarts or just once and they're going to loop and know how to uh, send the inputs and outputs to each of them. And it's first R4 signals. Don't restart on any amplifier. But they're already running in a sequence. Each one should consume any signals until it halts. That's good. All signals sent will be between pairs of amplifiers, except the very first signal. Last signal. Yeah. Do I still need to? Yeah, that's not clear. The thing I'm not getting is, do I still need to reset the phase signals or it's going to carry them forward on its own? Yes, one, two, three, E, two thrusters. I'm going to reread this a few times and make a decision and come back. Okay, so I've been thinking about it a bit and the way they described it reminds me a bit of um, process ring. And to do that, uh, I think what I'll need to do is, you know, how there's um, this output code that I had, and I just decided to send it to, um, where's my output code? Yeah, here. The output is sent um, that way. I'm wondering if what I need to do instead is just not to um, send it as a kind of a, raw message or something that goes to another process that would be differently. So, treating it differently. So here what I'm thinking is, uh, you know, I'm going to call these to be kind of IO. I'm going to send my other ones to be classified to be IO like that. Uh, instructions remain that way. Self is now sending IO as that result. And here, I'm going to call them to be IO as well. Oops. Yep, that one is remaining IO. Now, here the thing I'm going to do is just search max oh yeah I'm going to make sure that this keeps working and you will see a bit where I'm headed with this um, the thing I want to change is just probably change the direction of where the target of the output is going to be but for that okay the result is good so now the thing I'm going to do with the map is that in my um, output instruction here the target is going to be a special value. So uh, 
is going to be and I'm going to just stick a magical value in the map that will default to the process itself and that should keep all the other programs working yeah and now what I'm going to do is use that magical output channel value to um, stream things true. So here I had run programs and no, oh, I had already changed a program with that one. So I don't know if the result was the same. Uh, oh yeah, I ran the day seven not the example and the day seven that was the same the example is the one that's changing um and my change in broken way i don't think it's gonna work the same yeah no it's not advent it's day seven okay so it's able to work on the current functioning and i, I don't think that's what they were expecting because that would be too easy Right, one, three, nine. no, okay, yeah, that's not the right one. That would have been way too simple for it just to work because I already had the right structures. But it's able to search things already, just not the proper way. It's probably stopping too early. Uh, no, they want me to never stop the email. Yeah, the thing is that they are being set between pairs. But even if they're set between pairs, that should still work. So that. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the difference is that thing. Same connecting as before, but B is connected into A. Um, won't be sent through the amplifiers many times, but when does it stop? Don't restart the software. Keep it running the way it was. Okay, 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 okay. I think I get it. 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 So. A while ago, it was just running like you know, manual input, then P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Now, the thing is that uh, between each run, they want me to keep the old resulting map on top of the result and pass that through. Um, and someone on Twitter pointed me that processes would be a nice way to do that one. And the thing I'm guessing is that they just maintain all of that state by hand. And the thing that they would be recommending instead is to uh, wire them as processes. So manual input goes into one, goes into two, goes into three, goes into four, goes into five. But I tell five, you know what? You send your stuff up. To one. For me though, the little problem is how do I know that uh, whoop, not here how do I know when this is done running because it's it's easy to just wire them together but to know when they're done running what is going to tell me about them they're just going to loop but they're already finishing here actually no they're sending me output but they're probably still running right Oh, let's see what we have here. Uh, that's the thing. I don't remember what the comment is from that one. Uh, what do I have? Uh, I thought I had a thing with all the pids in that one. probably and uh, 
Oh, I just recall it's processes. Right, and so I probably have a dirty VM at this point. If I start. No, oh, okay, they're all finishing already. And I put in the right output, 0005. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just have to, you know, try a thing with the way I run the programs. Because <laughs> it's already running in its own process for that one. So I'm going to uh, wrap that around a bit differently. And that one runs until it receives IO. And how search max F was run programs to. I was saying the thing I wanted to do was to loop the programs, so. That was the initial, and those were all the phases, I believe. Yeah. No, the map is not there. All right. So, if I wanted to do this, how we do it probably hmm. I don't know that thing. I really really dislike these specifications it's just telling me how the program should work but frankly I'm not I'm not getting it um, amplifiers need different face settings integers from 5 to 9 and again it should just yeah. just going to start them as I did. I'm going to start them backwards because when we want to... Oh yeah, that's the thing. Uh, parameter is self. E is just going to give me its... Um, It's a bit of a leap, a leap of faith to do it the way they ask it to do because you can only test them if you got the entire setup done right. And I don't know that I have that. Ooh, that's deep in. Mm -hmm. And then it should start running once I give the phase. Oh, yeah, that's part of why I run the phases always first because that way I can always send in the phase first. And then I can just APID give me or give you the uh, IO0. That's the first program. And here, and we'll see if that works and loop programs is just going to be the search max search max looks for the new result tells me if it works All right uh, it's actually a good idea to avoid leaving too much garbage and now I have to write the 
program function that actually takes three arguments. Oops. Map uh, phase and output. And so for each one of these, I'm going to decide that oops, the temporary map actually map. This one with the output put here, and then I can send to myself the IO of the um, phase. So I risk having a little race condition here, because it's possible that I send the first IO before the rest. Uh, damn it. Because, yep, this is going to be a bit of a problem for this one. Uh, I'm going to... There's a way to spam them, I think, a bit more synchronously, but I'm not going to do that right away. Because this one here, the phase, always needs to be before the input. How am I going to synchronize them to be safe? I, uh, I, let's just see if it works first. This is a terrible pattern. I don't like it, but this is not production code. So let's see how that works. And then if I want to run the program, the thing I did was just run program with two of them. Yep, yeah, run program with pointer in the map. Uh, yeah, okay, then we'll see if that runs. A small character problem. Okay. We're going to compile advent, uh, no, day 07 example. Yeah, that explodes. Spawn link is throwing up. Bad argument. What's my bad argument? Uh, is it supposed to be a different anonymous function? All right. You know what? Let's just do it the way I recall it. There we go. So it's not that long to do. Yeah, that's clearly not how it works. Damn it. Uh, all right. I'm going to go experiment a bit with which one of the approaches it is they actually want because I'm just flat out not getting it and I'm going to return after that. All right, I figured it out. Uh, after a bit of experimentation, you can see that I, if I scroll back, I've got a lot of output and stuff that I was going through. And uh, what I figured out is that the reason I thought it was just busy looping is first of all, that sleep uh, makes search impossible. The other thing is that essentially the way it works is that when we go from that little map, they do expect the output from E to get back to A. And eventually when A stops, there is going to be empty output from E in there. That means nothing. And that is what they're looking for. 
it has to be seen by A as the leftover. So here's how we're going to make this work with everything wired together. So here I'm going to just going to give them all the address of the parent. And because I need to make a full graph, I essentially need to uh, wire them all together. Uh, and the phase comes with, uh, before the first input of the first program, so they're all going to be blocked. And now the only thing I need to do is send to each one of them, you know, APID, set your output to uh, EPID. Your, uh, no. To BPID, and then. BPID is going to send me into CPID. CPID to D, D to E, and E back to A. I'm still going to wait for the result, but I'm going to ask for an explicit result here because it's not going to be IO. A, I still set the first IO signal, and this will trigger the program for everyone. So now it's no longer that. This is now the parent. And the map that I need here is going to be different. I first set my say phase. This is still required, but here I'm going to receive set output to a given PID. And I am going to do this right here. I'm going to run the program. And when this is done, I'm going to have a result there. And if I have left over IO, it means I am in the program A right now. Um, and I am going to send it to the parent as um, result, result. And this is the end of the program. And that should hopefully work. Um, here, the thing I could do is, for example, um, kill all of my programs. Right now, they're linked. So, the thing I can do is just, um, you know, B. And, and just do some little cleanup in there because that's going to help with hot cuddling and then I return a result. And now if I try this, let me start from a clean shell. I compile. I try to, yeah, the example. I thought this would work. Uh, line 64. Well, yes, of course, but they are not supposed to be linked. That should be fine, usually. Oh, yep, wrong exit function. What was supposed to be the result for this one? Oop, wrong window in the browser. Three seven lines, so this is not going swimmingly. Am I wiring them in the right order then? Let me see. So A outputs to B, C outputs, B outputs to C, C to D, E to A, and then I start them. But I needed to start the IO before the phases. Okay, that's the thing. I had messed them up. Uh, actually, I want to flip these around to make sure that A starts first. C, B, and A, and the output is set first of all, and then that should ensure that at least they all work fine. Because the phase is going to be set for, oh phase needs to be set before the rest, but there is still no guarantee this is going to happen. So, uh, I'm going to use 
proclib to start the libraries, all the calls in the right order, which means I'm going to need to do module, the program is in here. Here, let's make it simple. Uh, I'm going to need to export program with a value of three. And proclib works essentially like spawn, except when you're ready to deal with different stuff, uh, because we have primed or IO properly, for example, um, you can go proclib init ack self, and that's going to return the process they need. And hopefully that eliminates the kind of race condition we might have had. Let's see. Yes, one, two, three, nine, two, six, seven, two, nine, one, three, nine, two, seven, six, two, nine. Let's try this one here, and that's going to be eighteen, two, one, six. So, all right, let's try it raw because if I can make this one. 18 to 1, 6, good. So this tells me that this is going to work for our buddy. Oops, program 2 here. Hopefully that gets to work. Day 7, uh, advent. Run 7. And that should be my output for this one. 540, something like that. And if this works... 112 because I cheated by dropping a bunch of times where I was just figuring out the order they wanted. And this worked. Alright, this is it for day 7. I already have day 8 available, but I've done enough for today that uh, we can call this a day. And so, see you again next time for day 8. Thanks a lot.